Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Uh, be sure to cast your vote for the show on Podcast Alley, podcastalley.greatdetectives.net, and uh, become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. We are up to 920 plus friends. It'd be great to get to a thousand before uh, October twelfth, which is the uh, uh, third anniversary of our pilot broadcast, or even till uh, on October twenty-sixth, which is, or I should say, the second anniversary of our launch of the show. Well, I want to uh, begin by thanking those who supported our listener support campaign. Had quite a few that have come in. And so we want to uh, thank Lise, who sends along a donation and uh, says, Listener donations are a great idea. I'm a regular contributor to NPR, especially since they lost public funding. I found your podcast the first week you started and have listened and donated ever since. Hearing you say Poirot perfectly the other day reminded me to send you the correct pronunciation of chutzpah. It is chutzpah. The C-H is pronounced like the H, and I know I've probably said chutzpah a few times. Now you can speak Yiddish as well as you speak French. Thanks so much, Lise, and uh, chutzpah. I definitely knew I needed to learn how to say Poirot right, because we were going to do that show. Uh, thank you for the remarking. Listener coaching does work. Ida also sends along a listener donation. So does Tom, uh, Colin, and Colin writes, stumbled onto your website a week ago, and I feel the need to tip my hat. Your site sets itself apart by making OTR shows feel like shows and not just uh, files downloaded from some random database. Keep up the great work and I'll be tuning in. Thanks so much, Colin. Definitely a fact we have gone for here. Andrew uh, sends a donation. says, love the shows uh, and request uh, the Father Brown Mysteries. We'll be sending those along. And lastly, Francis sends along a donation and I would, and request Perry Mason and the case of the Velvet Claws. I love your podcast and commentary. Keep them coming. Well, thank you so much for your support. And uh, now it's time for today's episode of Barry Craig. And this is one of my personal favorites. I think you're going to enjoy it as well. The title is A Very Odd Job. William Gargan stars as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. <laughs> The trouble with murder as a business is that very few of the men who take it up have any judgment. Sooner or later, they run it right into the ground. The National Broadcasting Company presents William Gargan in another transcribed drama of mystery and adventure with America's number one detective, Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Barry Craig speaking. With the weather what it is, a smart operator would be spending his evenings indoors, parked near the steam heat, with a glass in his hand and a small warm glow in the region of his lower chest. I guess I don't qualify. I still like to take walks. Around about this time of the night, there's not much on the street. The air's cold and clean. It's nice to find out you have a pair of lungs which can use that air. Hey, you! Me? Hold it, huh? Oh, what? Ah, the lippy type, huh? No, no, just not quick, that's all. You're Craig. That's more or less what I answer to. I got a job for you. Hmm, I'd better make a note of it. What the devil you took? How often does a job come running after I a man? Save the conversation for a friend, Craig. You would like to make a couple of hundred easy? Me and most of the adult male population of the United States? Take this. This? Hmm, a small puppet. Come to think of it, uh, are there any big puppets? You deliver that, that's all. Two hundred. I deliver it to who? The name is Ann Kelly. She wants a puppet? She'll be very happy to get that one, see? Uh, not exactly, but uh, there are lots of Kellys in the phone book. And this time of night, she'll be at Easy's open house. It's a clip joint over in the East 80s. She helps Easy keep the house open? She helps him keep it filled. What does she use, a hook? 
If you catch her routine, you'll be able to add it up for yourself. That's in addition to the 200? Yeah. I don't see the 200 yet. It's on your office desk. It's going to get awful dusty. You know, the last time I looked, I didn't notice any money on that desk. It's there now. But don't try to collect it, see? Not till after you deliver the puppet. Makes a kind of sense. Do I give Miss Kelly your regards along with the puppet? Do you know whose regards to give her? No. Well, then you better skip it. Now, you can make the joint in maybe 15 minutes. I wouldn't be happy about you dragging it out. Craig always keeps his clients happy. I'll get it to her in 15 minutes. So long. I uh, wouldn't bother remembering the license plate. You wouldn't? No, they don't belong to the car. Well, that's so. Ah, uh, even more than that. Yeah? The car don't belong to me. I didn't bother about the license plates. I always believe a client, even if he happens to be a mug. This one was. But he wasn't a liar. Easy's open house was over in the East 80s, and it was open. Aunt Kelly wasn't at the moment helping keep the house open. I ducked a head waiter and headed for the dressing room. One of the advantages of being a confidential investigator, you always know where the back rooms are, if you can call it an advantage. One of the doors had a gray slip of paper glued to it. The name on the paper was Ann Kelly. I didn't have to think about it much. The slip of paper, it started out in life nice and white. Practicing how to be a drummer, boy? That, I decided, was an invitation to come in. And Kelly had started out in life nice and clean. We all do. In her case, she'd held on to a little of that niceness, cleanness. A little. What happened to you? You lost your table or something? No. I'm on display out on the floor, not back here, mister. My name's Barry Craig. Well, that's a very fine name. I'll write home and tell Mother all about it. You're Ann Kelly. I'm not the king of France. But I guess you could tell that. They haven't got a king in France. Oh, no. I'm here on a job. Really? It's an odd kind of job. You want to cry on my shoulder about it? It's a nice shoulder, but... Uh, offhand, there wouldn't uh, seem to be anything wrong with the job. Then why don't you do it? Yeah. Uh, it's in my pocket here. Your job? The most important part of it. Uh, I was instructed to deliver it to you. Uh, this. That... That's... A puppet. Here. Oh, no. No. Miss Kelly! My client had said Ann Kelly would be very happy to get the puppet. He was wrong. Unless every time Ann Kelly got happy, she passed out. Miss Kelly. Miss Kelly. Kelly, you're on. Kelly. I don't like to be nasty, Kelly, but the customers are impatient and... Oh, oh. She fainted. Really, sir, you shouldn't... I mean, after all... I didn't. Oh. You easy? I beg your pardon? You meant, uh, am I Mr. Easy? That's what I meant. Well, I'm so sorry, I'm not. I'm Osborne. Oh, don't fret about it. Where can I find Easy? Oh, his office is down the hall. Uh, oh, what a delightful puppet. You must have dropped it? No. Well, I mean, is it yours? No. Well, it must be Kelly's then. Fancy. I'm too busy right now. Better hang around until she comes to, huh? Well, I suppose I must. Yeah. I didn't spend any time thinking. I hadn't anything to think about. The hallway back at the club was a carbon copy of them all. Shabby, the walls greasy with ancient dirt. The light bulb overhead not putting up much of a fight. Easy's office wasn't hard to find. That figured. Light leaked out from under the door. Somebody was in. The door was locked. Osborne could have been lying. Impatient, friend? He wasn't. Mr. Easy was at home. But why the delay? The strong, silent type, friend? The name's Craig. I think I'd like you using it better than friend. I'll try to remember. You coming in, Craig? If you don't mind. So, now what? Just information. What do you know about Ann Kelly? Why do I discuss her with you? I'm on a job. And it could turn out pretty nasty. And it could be the Kelly girl doesn't deserve it. She appeals to you? 
That could be arranged. Oh, uh, you got a heavy hand, friend. Lay off the friend, huh? Going around protecting virtue? You're a little late with Kelly. I asked you a question. So you did. I, uh... No. The desk drawer stays shut. I don't want to admire your gun. About the girl. She works here. The customers like her. I pay her a hundred and a quarter a week, period. How'd you come to hire her? She dropped in, asked for an audition, and she got it, so she got the job. Nice and neat. Don't try to make a thing of a girl passing out, Craig. Kelly happens to pass out easy. How'd you know she fainted? You stole me outside the door. Come on. I like it here. I said, come on. All right, take your hands off. I'm coming. Thanks. Stole me outside your door. Stole me in your office. You knew about her fainting. The pretty boy must have phoned from her dressing room. This one. Here. You're not Aunt Kelly. Of course she isn't, Craig. I could have told you that before you half knocked the door down. Hold on. Yeah. The same room. A hunk of paper with her name on it was torn off the door. Look, Craig, the little lady here is dressing for her act. We're in her way. This was Aunt Kelly's dressing room up until a couple of minutes ago. You're crazy. I'm beginning to think you've never even seen her. Where is she, Easy? She finished her last show for the night, probably on her way home. No. Well, the little lady could start screaming. That would bring us lots of company. Yeah. So it's going to be this way. I never saw Aunt Kelly. She wasn't here. I never handed her a... Wait a minute. What's this? That? Looks like a puppet to me. Whose puppet? How would I know? Maybe it belongs to Susie, does it, Susie? Yeah. There you are, Craig. Well? A nice snooker play. Shut Craig off in a corner, get Kelly out of the place, and... Okay. Excuse me, little uh, lady. Craig... Yeah? I don't want any trouble. I don't know what you think you saw. Make it short. But uh, if you want to look through the place, it's okay with me. Thanks. I'm not much good at closing stable doors, though. So long, Easy. I was in a hurry. Ann Kelly wouldn't be in the phone book. I needed help. A confidential investigator isn't much good on a big deal in a hurry, whatever the book says. I yelled for help to the cops. Lieutenant Rogers. Hmm? Oh, Craig, the perambulating operative. Take it easy, Trav, and don't forget, I never went to college. Will anyone ever forget I did? Lead a clean life, and maybe they will. Trav, I need help in a hurry. What kind of help? I want a girl named Ann Kelly found, and found fast. What's special about her? She faints when you shove a puppet under her nose. I feel something like that about puppets myself. You're not joking? No. All right. We'll go see what the boys in the back room are having. What uh, can you give me on her? She's an entertainer at Easy's Open House. So far, pretty bad. I've got a feeling she's in the wrong place. Chivalry, Barry? It's part of a job. I beg your pardon. I almost insulted you by implying you have a heart. Everybody's got a heart. All it does is pump the blood around. I was hired to deliver a puppet to her. She took one look at it and passed out. I went visiting easy. Not a nice man. No. He stalled me. By the time I realized it and shot back to the girl's dressing room, they'd planted somebody else there. The girl was gone. Uh, you uh, stop here. I'll go inside, find out if there's a record on her. You sit down and write out a nice description. You might feed a pretty boy named Osborne to your men, too. Works for easy. Osborne. Sit down, Barry. Get that description done. Uh, no poetry, though. Poetry? What's that? Trav didn't need a written description. He just thought it might be a good idea if I had something to do while I was waiting. I guess it showed pretty plainly. I didn't bother with the description. I just waited. Barry? Yeah? Yeah? Nothing on Kelly. No record. You got that description done? She's blonde, blue-eyed, medium height, in her 20s. What good would it do you? No good. Come on. Come on where? Osborne's in the books. I've got an address for him. All right. On our way over, you can tell me about who hired you for the puppet delivery. Yeah. I'll tell you something in return for it. You will? What about? Puppets. <laughs> We climbed into Lieutenant Rogers' car and went away from headquarters. My story didn't take up very much time. You never got a good look at your client, then? 
No, I'd recognize him, but... Uh, maybe it'll come out in the wash. Or perhaps we can correlate a couple of stories. You're speaking to somebody who had his troubles with the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. I imagine the eighth grade had more trouble with you. But about a year ago, the department became indirectly interested in the puppet show. Homicide? Homicide. The primary interest was by the treasury. So there's a couple of people who were very good with puppets, also did pretty well with distributing counterfeit money. Peculiar tie-up. No, no. The puppets worked with a tent show. A tent show is always moving, hits every part of the country. Its customers keep changing. It's not a bad center for distribution. I guess not. The puppets were handled by a couple of people. A blonde girl named Anne Keegan and her father. Keegan? Kelly? A possibility. However, the treasury started pressing. Things happened. There was no direct evidence about the girl, but her father was definitely implicated. Along with a couple of men in the background. One to supply the counterfeit, the other to run the whole operation. They had names? The manufacturer was called Dalgos. The man in charge may have been John Easy. May have been? No evidence. Dalgo served a year on an old charge. The operation was broken up, but uh, a couple of hundred thousand dollars in very good counterfeit currency disappeared at the time. And somebody's looking for it now. You said homicide was interested? Yes. The girl's father was cracking under the pressure. He was ready to confess. But someone got to him before then. And he died? He died. Jigsaw puzzles are fun working out. You keep looking at the pieces, and after a while you begin putting them together. You have your problems, but pretty soon you lick them. And then you're finished. But suppose you don't like the picture you wind up with. Osborne's got an apartment in this house. He tie in with the tent show deal? No evidence. Hmm. Osborne. Osborne, yes. Apartment 1C. Would be on the ground floor. Convenient. You probably think you're being cynical, but you're right. For a criminal, the ground floor is definitely convenient. I'm bright without knowing it, huh? <laughs> uh, about the only way I'm bright. Your modesty is becoming. How accurate it is. No knock? No knock. This one ought to do it. We uh, won't loiter until invited. Yes. Yes, what? The room's empty. But the lights are on. Door on the opposite wall. Shut. However. Hmm. Bedroom. And... Not empty. That's your friend, Osborne? He's not nearly so pretty anymore. The girl. No sign of her in here. Nor in the living room. The bathroom. No. And the body's still warm. Window open. Alley. Anything besides the garbage cans? Sure. Ash cans. Phone... No. Back in the living room. Nice apartment. A Mojilani on the wall. Modern furniture. With thick walls. The shots weren't hurt. A what on the wall? That painting. Looks more French than Italian. Mm -hmm. You knew who Mojilani was all along. Oh, well. We'll have company in a few minutes. The girl must have decided she didn't care for Osborne's hospitality. Barry! Barry, come back here. I don't want you sticking that thick neck of yours out. Barry! I wasn't in the mood for company. Besides, everything had gone too smooth, too fast. The cops would have a time breaking things out into the open. They were dealing with professionals. Me? Maybe I wouldn't be figured close. I never won any medals for brilliance. It might be a help. Everything had happened in a hurry. The man who'd handed me the puppet that started everything had mentioned how smart I'd be if I stayed away from my office until my job was done. That meant a man would be watching it. Maybe nobody had notified him I'd finished my job. Maybe he'd still be watching the office. 
He was there. He wasn't happy about it either. That was a cold doorway he was holding down. Me? I picked another doorway and waited. I wait very good. One of these days, I'm going to start a movement to have all doorways heated, if I ever thaw out. A car came down the street. A quick look told me it was the same one I'd seen the boy with the puppet riding. I let it pass me and made my car. Watched the car up ahead stop for the mug on sentry duty. He climbed in. Everything was okay now. Craig could go upstairs and collect his 200. But Craig had other ideas. They weren't expecting company. They weren't very careful. They let a straight run downtown and over towards the harbor. They pulled the car up into an alley, left it there, and used their feet. It wasn't a long walk. They used a stoop, went into a house that was young and fresh, maybe when the last century died, and shut the door behind them. Force of habit got me to the back door. There wasn't a cop in sight. I leaned on the door. It opened. They were pretty sure of themselves. Downstairs was nothing much. A couple of empty rooms, one that wasn't empty. Two mugs, neither of whom interested me. I tried to stand. Nobody was worried. I got to the top. Things improved up there. If you could call it an improvement. Waterworks don't make much of an impression on me, kid. I don't know what you want. In a pig's eye, you... I already told you. Sure, and I already didn't believe you. I can't. Oh. I got a lot more. Well? I could open the door and walk in. I might live long enough to identify my client, but not long enough to do the girl much good. I ain't got all year. I need the green stuff. I got sent up. The cops took over my equipment. I need the green stuff. I pass it on back in business again. You wouldn't want to stand in my way, would you? I never knew anything about Sure, sure, it was your old man. Remember what happened to him? You... It could happen to you. What was the smart move? Get out of there and yell for the cops? Maybe they would have showed up in time. But who's smart? <laughs> Hello, Dalgus. Your private eye. What? I don't like the way you treat women, Dalgus. I'm firing you as a client. Okay, you've been funny. Now talk straight. That was straight. What are you waiting for, a medal? I'll take Ann Keegan instead. You know who I am? It's been a lousily kept secret. Excuse me for interrupting, but I ain't giving out Ann Keegan's tonight. Just one will be enough. You packing a rod, Snoop? What do you think? I think you ain't. Otherwise, you'd be showing. So... I can break you in half before you get yours out. Maybe. But the boy's downstairs. What do you think they'll be doing? You'd be dead before they got here. Maybe. Maybe not. But after they got here, you would be dead. And the girl, she might not be so lucky. We've both got something. Oh, you got your prayer. No. You haven't yelled for help yet. I so what? So you're afraid of what I'd do to you before they got here? I'm just hanging around waiting to see how bright you are. We'll leave it at that. I'm not at all bright. I want the girl. Nah. We've both got something. You've got the boys downstairs. Me? I've got the green stuff. The 200 grand in counterfeit money. Hey, where did you... Not here, not on me. How foolish do you think I am? You're running a nice bluff. No bluff. Ann, how'd you get your job at the open house? I... After my father was killed, Easy offered it to me. He used to be a friend of my father's. He said he'd look after me. I'll bet he did. None of this tells me where the stuff is. Nobody's telling you. Not till the girl and I are out of here. You take me for a second. You picked the girl up after she left the nightclub. You sent me to her with a puppet. You figured it would frighten her and make her run. Hey, you're not telling me anything I don't know. Yes, I am. Was anyone with her? Yeah. Yeah, cute little fella. I didn't have any trouble with him. His name's Osborne. I ain't anxious for an introduction. You uh, picked up something else when you picked Dan up. Yeah? A murder rap. That's supposed to be funny. A murder rap for who? Osborne. What are you talking about? All I did was push him around a little. When the cops found him, he'd been pushed around a lot. 
But half a dozen thirty-two caliber lead-nosed slugs. Oh, what's that got to do with... She's got it all now. How do you like it? I don't like it. At all. You've got one chance of beating that rap. Yeah, huh? Keeping the girl and me alive. How would that happen? I can clear you if I want to. But it'll cost you. Cost me what? $200,000 in counterfeit money. It took him a little time to decide. Him a little time and me a lot of sweat. But then he came around. Halfway. He let Anne go. She went. But me? Me he was holding on to. Until I could produce the counterfeit money. And the out for a murder rap. I got a gun on you and I keep it on you. The boys cover the open house front and back. Any funny business? I know, I know. Yeah, but you ain't sure. You can be sure. With that wrap right in my shoulders, what have I got to lose? What do you want me to do? Turn green with fright? Well, we've arrived. What do you know? Hey, Sam. Get out first. Cover a big boy from the outside, huh? Ah, uh, you go out, Craig. Thanks. Me with you. We walk nice and close together. The gun right under your ribs. You wouldn't think of a quick wrestle. Trigger's shave goes off if I breathe too hard. It's all built up. Let's go, huh? Sam, you take the bank. Big boy walks out without me. He gets it hard. You stay out here, beef. Same order for you. Come on, Craig. That joint ain't open. Not for business. There's a back office. Yeah. That's where we do business? Right. We go in. They don't smell good in here. You ever been in a place that did? You watch it. I insult Easy. Easy reminds me. Ever know a man named Easy? Nah. You're going to. Come on. Light through that door. The one we want. I don't think we knock. Hello, Easy. Craig. And... Hey. What did you call him? Easy. John Easy. Any objections? Well, the name's Marlowe. Ain't it, Marlowe? Hello, Doggos. Long time no see. Not such a long time. A one-year stretch. And that's over. I'm pleased for you. Though I can't say I approve of the company you're keeping. Hey, never mind that. I got a gun on him. But what about... He's the man that worked with you and Keegan before you were sent up, Doggos? Yeah. He's the man gave Ann Keegan a job here. Because he used to be a friend of her father. Nothing wrong with that. Except, who killed Ann Keegan's father, Dalgus? Uh, I don't know. Did you? You're fishing for what? The truth. I don't think you killed him, Dalgus. Thanks for nothing. But who did? Who does it have to be? Dalgus, why my office? I mean, if you enjoy playing games with this thick-headed idiot... I, I don't think you killed Osborne either, Dalgus. But uh, look when Osborne died. Immediately after your release from jail. And under what circumstances? When he was supposedly hiding Ann Keegan out. What does that add up to? Your conviction, because you wound up with Ann Keegan. Well, that much I know. What you're handing me now is... John come... Easy, alias Marlowe. He had the motive. He'd latched on to the $200,000. He knew you'd be after Ann as soon as you got out. That's why he hired her. So he could use her for a bait. A bait for a trap in which he could break your neck. It could be that way. There goes... Yeah? You got your gun on, Craig? Yeah. Then you won't be able to do very much about this, will you? What? Yeah, my gun pointing at you. As far as yours is concerned, shoot Craig or not as you please. Why, you dirty... You're guy. using that gun on Craig? No? I suppose you drop it. I... Okay. Mr. Craig is unfortunately right. Too bad you had to get him involved in this, Dalgos. Otherwise, you'd have a little longer to live. Not much, but every hour counts, doesn't it? You've got that, Dal. Of course I have, and I'll have fun spending it with caution. I'll think of you often, Dalgos. You can't afford sure it. Sure I can. Craig tracked you down. You and he had a gunfight. You both got killed. Who knows? Craig might even get a medal. It'll work, Dalgos. I don't think so. What? Drop it. I said... What? Hi, Barry. Hello and welcome, Trav. 
Mr. Easy, or I guess I should say Marlowe, will live long enough. The uh, counterfeit money? In his safe, I guess. Oh, we'll find out. Are you waiting for anything, Dalgos? Huh? No, 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 no. <laughs> I've got a few policemen outside. They've collected his associates. I think they'll be pleased to pick him up. He's managed to acquire a few brand new charges in a very short time. Thanks for showing up on time. I was beginning to wonder if you ever would. You were gambling on the girl, weren't you? Uh-huh. But she was honest that she'd come straight to us it and... paid off, didn't it? She's waiting for you at headquarters. She wants to see you. Barry, when you get to her, I think you'll first realize just how well it paid off. Hmm. Good night, folks. See you next week. You've been listening to William Gargan in another exciting transcribed mystery drama from the adventures of Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Tonight's story, A Very Odd Job, was written by Lou Vittis. Next week, it's the strange story titled Diary of Death, about which Barry Craig has this to say. Next week, murder counts to a bloody three. When three pieces of a treasure map that should lead to a great fortune only leads to greater misfortune. See you next week, folks. Featured in the role of Anne was Elspeth Eric. Barry Craig, starring William Gargan, was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is Don Pardo speaking. Now, Robert Montgomery presents something different in news analysis on NBC. Welcome back. Well, a pretty fun ride. Lots of great twists as usual with Barry Craig. Well, now we turn to listener comments and feedback. And uh, some listeners are a little bit behind where we are right now. Tim, about a 100 uh, episodes back, says, I'm slowly but surely capitaling up in my quest to listen to Great Detectives from the beginning. I just passed episode 400. I suspect that you already know this, but in case no one has told you, episode 397, Nero Wolf has your intro comments on both of the ends of the episode. I was a bit disappointed not to be able to hear your words of wisdom concerning the episode. By the way, recently heard listener comments are right. When you slow down your delivery, the commentary is much easier to understand. Keep up the good work, and thanks again uh, for the podcast. Uh, well, thanks so much. And that's one thing I have to remember uh, and be uh, very conscious of, not self-conscious, but... Uh, I tend to, uh, I guess, have a mental association with fastness and speed uh, being an indication of excitement. And perhaps in some situations they are, like in cartoons, I guess. But, uh, yeah, even going back to calls, that's something I continue to work on. Thanks for the reminder. And then I uh, received another note, this one on the 400th episode special, Screen Director's Playhouse DOA. Uh, just a quick note, I know that I just wrote you this morning, however, while driving to and from work, I listened to the Screen Director's Playhouse DOA. I have to disagree with your comment about the music. Although I've not seen the movie, I thought that at a single piano playing in lower registers was perfect for establishing a film noir fe feeling to the radio play. I even recall commenting to myself early on in the play that the music fit the story. Uh, keep on with your great podcast, Tim. Well, thanks so much, Tim, and maybe it is a fact of having uh, seen the movie. But different people have different uh, perspective on those. So using a single piano may also have been an indication of NBC Radio budgetary uh, constraints in 1951. But thanks so much for your comments, and we're actually coming up on our 500th episode special. 
And I hope uh, you'll enjoy that just as well and encourage you to plan on listening to Dick Powell and to the ends of the earth. Tomorrow, Dick Powell will be with us in Rogue's Gallery. And next week, we'll be back with another episode of Barry Craig Confidential Investigator. In the meanwhile, send your comments to Box13 at GreatDetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And you can leave us a voicemail, 208-991-4783. But from Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.